So, Randall Kessel, how are you doing here today? I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm doing very good, actually. Just randomly came by. I was looking at your comics. I saw you did a, a piece that everybody had recommended to me. It was the Hawk and Dove Five Issue Miniseries. Mm -hmm. So I had a short time to skim through it. And this is the issue where I believe Donna comes in? The, the new Dove. Donna. Donna? Donna. Well, there's a Donna, too. Just to confuse people, we threw that in. Ah, I see. Now, um, she was your creation, right? Mine and Carl's and Rob's. Ah. So, but it's uh, the whole Hawk and Dove series that we did kind of came about because Carl had done a drawing of a female dog, dove in his sketchbook. And I said, uh, who's that? And he goes, oh, I always thought Dove, I always thought dove should be a girl. And we kind of talked about that for a bit, and we sold Mike Carlin on the idea, and poof. Interesting. I liked it. It was really good. And it was like, uh, you worked with Rob Liefeld on that one? Mm -hmm. How was it like to work with him? He was like brand new back then? That was, Rob was brand new. And I had been, I had recommended him for a piece. He had done a bonus book at DC, and that was about all the work he'd done. And I actually bent Mike Carlin's arm to get him to use Rob in this book, because I said, I like this guy's energy. He's got a lot of enthusiasm. He's got a new take on things. And I think he's going to go places. I, I was, you know, of course, no one's ever heard of him again since. So, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's hard to find anything with him seen, nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, but you've moved on. You've also done a lot of stuff. I see on your table you have My Little Pony, and you have Sensation Comics. I say, this is my rage. Rampage Jackson to My Little Pony here. <laughs> ah, right. Sublime, ridiculous, depending on which way you look, one is the other. Well, you can write uh, anything, really. It seems like you can write almost anything. You really can do My Little Pony, Little Kids. Uh, Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. How was it writing Sensation Comics? Cause that's that, was, that, was, that was a backwards one where I went in to talk to the editor about writing a story and she had a cover that she had commissioned. So I actually wrote a story to the cover as opposed to having a cover drawn for a story after the fact. So I got playful with it. In that particular issue, there's three little chapter ets inside and they correspond to alternate comics, uh, silver, uh, classic golden age comics, and current comics. Oh, nice. I got very meta with it because the three girls also represent the relationship of, so I, I thought, okay, my niece, if my niece ran into Wonder Woman, she would just have a lot of snark for her. You know, have that yeah. new, new attitude to girls these days, etc. And I thought, okay, what if Wonder Woman ran into some people who really did not care? And so we have in the three girls the three attitudes you can have towards a celebrity. Adoration, contempt, or vlogging. Ah. So. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen, uh, uh, what do you think about the new uh, Wonder Woman that's coming out in Batman vs. Superman, uh, Gal Gadot? don't know much about it. Yeah, I, I've like seen one visual, so I don't really have an opinion other than, oh, interesting visual. I hope it's really good. And uh, do you follow the My Little Pony cartoon? Yes and no. I'm probably a little behind. I'm not... I do all my research when I sit down to do the scripts, and I'm not the sort of person who can name every factoid every time, but I recognize most of it. But what are you thinking? I, you know, I said I saw like maybe one or two episodes of it. It's probably not my demographic, but it's good for what it is. But think about it. Think about the incredible sea change for girls. Yeah. For years we had Smurfs and Girl Smurf. We had Justice League and Wonder Woman. We had one girl, one woman in any group, so she had to be everything feminine. In My Little Pony, you've got six lead characters. Each of the six is different from each of the others, yes. but they're all feminine, they're all girls which means you as a girl have a range of options for growing up as opposed to, oh, I must be like everyone, every woman. Oh. And it, so that's a profoundly huge change. You know what, I think about that when we go back to like the Powerpuff Girls. I remember that was big when it came out. Mm -hmm. Actually, I really liked the Powerpuff Girls. And you had three different sort of girls there. Yeah, you had like the tough one, mm -hmm. the little like softer one, but mm -hmm. we still kick butt. And then mm -hmm. you had like the one that's like kind of like more wrapped all around, had to be the leader, right. be in charge. But they're all still girls. Yes. So the definition, if you're looking forward to growing up, you realize you have more options. Now that we're talking about it, what are some other all-girl teams we can talk about? What are your other favorite female leads? Like, do you like Raven, Starfire? I always like Wonder Girl best. Wonder Girl? Teen Titans. Um, do you like Donna Troya? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of... The groups. Oh, I always like Kitty Pride in X Men. Oh, and yeah. Here's another example of a different kind of girl. You know, my favorite girl from X Men was uh, I. I say it was kind of a tie between Jubilee because I, I really liked the sparkles and like Did everything was flashy. Did you see the flashy. pair of Jubilees running around today? Yes, the, I saw that it was like a guy two, Jubilee, girl Jubilees. No, there's two girl Jubilees who like met here for. I guess they. I don't know if they met for the first time or just met up this morning, not knowing what each other was going to be dressed as, and they're both Jubilee. Nice. So, yeah, that's when you know your friends are thinking in sync with you. The other one I really liked was Rogue. She was like 
so tough and she can fly. She was like almost like Superman, like in the sense that she could do everything. Right. Anything anybody else can do. Exactly. As I, well, I grew up watching the cartoon and I really loved Rogue. Mm -hmm. She's definitely one of my favorite women in the... She's also one of the best designs, one of the most yes. interesting designs. Yes, of course. Uh, what are the other ones? Scarlet Witch, I can't say I know too much about her. Um, what other leading women can we talk about? I really want to... The Wasp, going yeah. Down the line to the Avengers. Yes, she's coming down the line soon. We're talking about girl characters. What about Thor? Thor, yes, Jane, right? Mm -hmm. Oh man, uh, I feel like kind of, I feel kind of bummed. I heard they gave her like, spoiler alert, cancer, and I kind of felt like I was kind of bummed. I don't know they re retroactively. Well, they didn't so much give her cancer as her cancer is what created the situation where she could be become Thor. Ah, so. I see. That's cool. Are you working? There's a lot of, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of girl characters. I have to admit, you know, boys will always be my favorite in life, but um, that's. My it's a new age bias. in comics where it's a lot more diversity now, and I think mm -hmm. it's actually, I think it's really cool that we're not just saying like like it's it's for everybody and we're embracing everybody. Well, I don't think there's ever been. I keep saying this. I don't think there's ever been a bigger range of styles. Yeah. Considered professional and that are allowed in the the mainstream sphere, but we're also getting to the point where there's never been a bigger range of lead characters yes. and styles of characters. And they, I mean, I want a world where everybody feels like they're a part of it because they see themselves represented in some way. Yeah. You know what? I agree even, with that. Even spiky star-headed guys. <laughs> you know what? I, I think we play a lot of 80s goons and I'm okay with that. Um, as far as like Latino, man, I, 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 when I watch The Flash, it's always like vibe, you know, Cisco. That's like my guy. There's not a lot of like Latino men, so it's always like that's the one guy I'm always rooting for. You know what I would say to people when they say, "How come there aren't blanks, more blanks in comics?" I say, "Cause you're not doing comics." Oh. There you go. There's your yeah. challenge. That is a challenge, cause I can either do more comics or just keep supporting Cisco and the Flash, cause I, I love that guy. I love how he's nerdy. He always wearing like his nerd outs, like in his t-shirts, the way he dresses his isn't hair. It, isn't it nice to have a Hispanic model as a nerd and not as just a gang boy? Yes, so much, so much. That I really love. And so I, I love how the TV shows are also reflecting that too now. It's a new change. I'm loving the new movies. Um, are you working on anything new by any chance? Uh, if, you go to, if you're on Facebook, you can look up Shadow Zone Graphic Novel and see a huge project that Brian Odegawa, Odegawa and I are working on. And we're slowly slogging our way through that one. Let's see, I just sent off another little pony script. Um, I don't have anything else I can tell you about yet. There's, I do have a property called Sundown Crossroads that will premiere in Dark Horse Presents sometime beginning next year. Cool. Uh, and yeah, that's all I can say right now. <laughs> that's okay. So where can we find you on the net? Because you're actually a really find interesting person. I'm easy. I'm Barbara Kiesel on Twitter, and I'm Barbara Randall Kiesel on Facebook. Okay, because, yeah, actually, we had a really interesting conversation. I wish we could keep this going. I will keep it going on Twitter. Sounds good. And I think everybody should keep it going uh, with my Ever Kessel. It was a pleasure to meet you. I just randomly coming here. She had a random comic book she wrote. Probably one of the best presentations of just, like, your own <laughs> comics. Like, here's a box of comic books I wrote. Pick anyone you want. <laughs> Thor. Yes, Jane, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Uh, I feel like kind of the, I feel kind of bummed. I heard they gave her like, spoiler alert, cancer, and I kind of felt like I was kind of bummed. I don't know if they re retroactively. Well, they didn't so much give her cancer as her cancer is what created the situation where she could be become Thor. Ah, so. I see. That's cool. Are you working? There's a lot of, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of girl characters. I have to admit, you know, boys will always be my favorite in life, but um, that's. My it's a new age bias. in comics where it's a lot more diversity now, and I think mm -hmm. it's actually. I think it's really cool that we're not just saying, like, like it's, it's for everybody and we're embracing everybody. Well, I don't think there's ever been, I keep saying this, I don't think there's ever been a bigger range of styles yeah. considered professional and that are allowed in the, the mainstream sphere. But we're also getting to the point where there's never been a bigger range of lead characters yes. and styles of characters. And they, I mean, I want a world where everybody feels like they're a part of it because they see themselves represented in some way. Yeah, you know what, I agree even, with that. Even spiky star-headed guys. <laughs> you know what, I, I think we play a lot of 80s goons, and I'm okay with that. Um, as far as like Latino, man, I, I, I when I watch The Flash, it's always like vibe, you know, Cisco. That's like my guy. 
because there's not a lot of like Latino men. So it's always like that's the one guy I'm always rooting for. You know what I would say to people when they say, "How come there aren't blanks, more blanks in comics?" I say, "Because you're not doing comics." Oh. There you go. There's your yeah. challenge. That is a challenge because I can either do more comics or just keep supporting Cisco and the Flash. Because I, I love that guy. I love how he's nerdy. He always wearing like his nerd outs, like in his t-shirts, the way he dresses his isn't hair. It, isn't it nice to have a Hispanic model as a nerd and not as just a gang boy? Yes, <laughs> so much, so much. That I really love. And so I, I love how the TV shows are also reflecting that too now. Mm -hmm. It's a new change. I'm loving the new movies. Um, are you working on anything new by any chance? Uh, if you go to, if you're on Facebook, you can look up Shadow Zone Graphic Novel and see a huge project that Brian Odegawa, Odegawa and I are working on. And we're slowly slogging our way through that one. Let's see, I just sent off another Little Pony script. Um, I don't have anything else I can tell you about yet. There's, I do have a property called Sundown Crossroads that will premiere in Dark Horse Presents sometime beginning next year. Cool. Uh, and yeah, that's all I can say right now. <laughs> that's okay. So where can we find you on the net? Because you're actually a really find interesting person. I'm easy. I'm Barbara Kiesel on Twitter, and I'm Barbara Randall Kiesel on Facebook. Okay, because, yeah, actually, we had a really interesting conversation. I wish we could keep this going. I will keep it going on Twitter. Sounds good. And I think everybody should keep it going uh, with my Ever Kessel. It was a pleasure to meet you. I just randomly come in here. She had a random comic book she wrote. Probably one of the best presentations of just, like, your own comics. <laughs> like, here's a box of comic books I wrote. Pick anyone you want. Really cool. I, I got it. I'm not sure I would call that best, but. I liked it. It was one of the most successful. I bought a whole, like, series. I don't often do that. Usually I just get one or two. But the fact that I had that death clutch on your arm and wouldn't let go until you did, right? Oh, no, no. I, I, I really wanted it. Actually, I might get the Armageddon one, too. Actually, oh, that's one I wanted to talk about right before we log off. The Armageddon 2001. I heard there was a leak, and there was, like, a last-minute switch oh, with no, a... The, the character of Monarch was originally intended to be Captain Adam. Yes. And somebody leaked the information. So a few people got together, <coughs> and they looked at the slate of titles they had, and they came up with a, a substitution. And as it was told to me, the first version as it was told to me was awesome. They said Hawk and Dove become Monarch. And I thought that's great because that makes the, ter the character internally dynamic, internally uh, chaotic. Yeah. And then it was just, oh, kill the girl, make the guy the bad guy because he's already kind of mean. And I, I thought wow. it was just lame ass lame. Yeah. So that, that's it a biased opinion. It was a bit of a cop out, but yeah, I actually still remember that. I have a couple of Armageddon two thousand ones, and I remember the leak and how he got switched to Hawk. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to get your opinion on it. <laughs> uh, you wrote the issue, so yeah, it's another. That's a really uh, to me that was like one of those like uh, key moments in comic history too. Thank you so much. It was You're such welcome. a pleasure.